Hi everyone, welcome to the 12th episode of Coding Club, and today we're going to be looking at the war card game, which is the assignment for the intermediate problems. And if you don't know where the intermediate problems are, check the description of this video, and if you're watching this downloaded, then check the description on Coding Club of episode number 12, and uh, you should see the intermediate problems, and then go to the assignment war. But I will give you guys a description anyway. Playing against a second player that is not a computer, each draws cards that go from ace to prince, queen, and king. The cards in that order go from points values of 1 to 13. The game ends either when stop in all caps is inputted, or when all 52 cards in the deck are gone through. You do not need to make each of the 52 cards unique, meaning it can be like a bunch of decks of cards shuffled together, and then you just take a ra random 52 of those. Uh, and the winner is announced, um, the winner who is announced is the player with the most points, and you can use methods or not. So if you want to use methods, you can make the first program like this. So you go to default package, go to new, go to class, and then type war card game main or just war card game. Then you can make the check for public study for me and click finish. And then if you are doing a method, then you can go to new, you can go to class again, and then you can make like war card game method and do not check public static void main. But as of right now, we are just uh, doing it as a normal program because I wanted to make it a little more simple for you guys so we can have everything on one screen. And uh, if you want to have a challenge, try to make it a method. And if you also want to have a challenge, you could try to make it so that it's just one card deck. So there are a set amount of each card. So like there are only four aces, there are only four kings, there are only four queens, there are only four like fives. So maybe you could do something like that. But those are some challenges for you guys. But to start this off, we import keyboard reader, keyboard reader reader equals new keyboard reader. And then we import random, random generator equals new random. And we create a string variable called key, which is basically to uh, see if the user inputs stop. If they input stop, then we end the program. But if they do not input stop, then we just continue. And uh, we also have integers for random card, which is basically uh, the, um, the variable for us to generate like what card number we have and how many points we're going to get. And then player one score and player two score, those are obviously the scores. And we set them to zero at the beginning because those are the scores at the beginning. And then this is our loop for the whole program. This is the main loop. It's a for loop and it says int i equals zero. i is less than 26, i plus plus. So if it starts at zero and uh, it ends at when it's less than 26, that means that the loop runs 26 times because it runs at zero from zero to 25. And zero to 25, if you count those, those are 26 numbers. And uh, it's 26. A deck of cards has 52 cards. But I do 26 because each loop has two cards being pulled. One card is pulled for player one, and then another card is pulled for player two. And then it repeats. One card is pulled for player one, and another card is pulled for player two. And it goes on until 52 cards are pulled. Okay, so one card is pulled for player one. If it is player one's turn, press key and enter. If you want to end, type stop. And then if key is equal to stop, then it breaks. And you have to have this because... Uh, Obviously, it's like keyboard reader, so you have to uh, read the keyboard. And then if the key is equal to stop, then it breaks. And break basically means that it like goes to the closest uh, loop, so the closest for, for loop or the closest while loop. And once it gets there, it just ends that loop, and it just goes to the next part of the program. So if I do break here, it just goes straight to this for loop, because an if statement is not a loop. So it just goes straight to the for loop, and then... The for loop, you can see it ends right here. So that means that it goes to this part of the program where it uh, calculates the scores and it calculates who wins. So once uh, it does that, once it uh, sees if you've done stop or not, it generates a card between 1 and 13. Generate an X and 13 generates something, a number between 0 and 12. But then when you do the plus 1, it generates between 1 and 13 because 0 plus 1 is 1 and then 12 plus 1 is 13. And 13 would be king, 12 would be queen, 11 would be jack, and then 1 to 10 would be uh, ace to 10. And then basically we do these uh, um, statements. If random card is equal to 1, then it says you picked ace, and then it adds 1 to your existing score. Player 1 score is equal to player 1 score plus 1. Basically just adds 1 to what you already have. And same thing here, player 1 score plus equals 2 is the exact same thing as like equal, as like player 1 score equals player 1 score plus 2. They're the exact same thing, except that the plus equals makes it way shorter. I have both here just as examples, but if you want to like be more efficient in your code, make sure to use this. 
because it just makes it easier, so much easier. And then I do plus equals two because instead of adding one, you add two because you picked a two card. And then you do it for three, you do it for four, you do it for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then jack, you add 11. A queen, you add 12. And then king, you add 13. Then you do the exact same thing except for like one or two uh, options for player two. It is player two's turn, press the key and enter. If you want to end, type stop. And uh, if it equals stop, the key equals stop, then we first off print the scores of player one and player two, and then we break. In this part, we don't print the scores of player one and player two, because we kind of assume that if you are doing this, uh, it means that you already have been um, like at the end of this loop already, and you did it just printed out the scores of player one and player two. So it'd be kind of pointless if you printed it out again, because why would you want to print out the scores a second time in a row when the scores are the exact same? And you might be thinking, well, if you click, if you type break, if you type stop at the uh, beginning of the program, then you don't show the scores at all. Well, that is true, but the scores are zero at the beginning, so it doesn't really matter if you show the scores or not because they are zero. So that's why I have it here, because I want to show the updated score, but I don't have it here because it just doesn't matter. Okay. And then once we do that, we do the exact same random card is equal to generator next in 13 plus 1, generates a random number from 1 to 13. And then if random card equals 1, player 2 scores equal to player. Ooh. I just found a mistake in my program. Player 2 scores equal to player 2 score plus 1. Wow, I didn't know I made that mistake. So that's why it, count. it matters to look through all your bugs because... Um, sorry, if it matters to look through your program because you could find bugs that have been sitting there for like weeks or months. That's been sitting there for like a really long time. Wow. Okay, but player two scores equal to player two score plus one. And then else, if random card is equal to two, player two score is equal to is plus equals two. And then plus equals three, plus equals four, all the way to plus equals 13. And then we print out the scores again. So player one score, player one score, player two, player two score. And then once this runs, 26 times or once we have done stop once we've done stop and all sorry in all capitals I don't know what's happening I need to swallow or something but then once we do that we can do if player one score is greater than player two score we can print player one wins and if player one score is less than player two score then player two wins because player two is a larger score else it's a tie because it means that their scores are equal so let's run this program I already ran it a while back so it's gonna be a little faster to load so it is player one search. So you could either just click enter or you could like do like anything random then do enter. So uh, I picked three and then player one picked a sorry player two picked ace. So player one has three player two has one and then we just keep on doing that. So you can see here and I could just keep on doing enter until the program ends. Okay so we've done it and then we have entered 52 times and the loop has run 26 times. So Player 2 is 188, player 2 wins. And then if we run the program again, and then let's say I do stop right at the start. Tie, because we both have 0. And maybe I could do enter like 2 times. Then I do stop. And then player 2 wins. So that's the program. Uh, if you guys want to uh, do the challenges of making it a method, or of making it an actual deck of cards with a set number of each card, Make sure to do that if you want to. But thank you guys all for watching. Make sure to watch all the other videos if they come out. And I'll see you guys all later. Bye!